Hello everyone, my name is Oksana. It's Road to AdWords, weekly AdWords Insider the 31st. We deliver the news about the creation of our project AdWords. And as usual, Takokao-san, could you please open our session today? Okay, uh, thank you, Oksana. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Hiro Tokugawa. So uh, finally, uh, we come to the uh, big enchilada of Japanese food. Uh, this sounds very strange, uh, which is sushi. Now, uh, sushi is everywhere. Uh, you go to New York, uh, there are Bangladeshi sushi uh, chefs. And then uh, you buy sushi at, you can buy sushi packs at all the supermarkets. Uh, it is a bit scary. Uh, I don't try them overseas, but it's very happy to see a part of Japanese culture being uh, loved so much all over the world. Uh, the thing about the interesting thing about sushi is that uh, it's a combination of uh, what is this? A carbohydrate, vinegar, and uh, and pro and animal protein. So this is like uh, a nice sandwich. Okay. Uh, so there is bread, occasionally sourdough, and uh, there is cured meat. And then you very often, well, usually you have pickles. And in the case of like the Reuben sandwich, uh, you have cabbage and then Thousand Island dressing. It's like that. So the, ba the basic component uh, is the same. And sushi is probably the uh, best known and most exotic finger food these days for everyone. And it is it appears as high end, uh, but exotic meals in uh, many Hollywood movie. And so but actually, uh, at the beginning, it was very different from what we eat today. Uh, and the history of sushi goes back to the 8th century, when the capital of Japan was in a small city called Nara, where there are more deers than people today. And there's one big Buddha there. Uh, so uh, you see, the idea was to catch, well, they did not have refrigeration. So uh, they cooked rice, they boiled, no, they steamed rice, and then uh, there will be lactic acid in the rice and then you put fresh fish on that rice with a lot of salt and and then the bacteria the lactic acid bacteria in the rice would ferment the fish as they were kept very long and it usually took two years for this type of sushi to become ready to eat and i think you have something very similar to this in uh, sweden still you have it and it's the world's smelliest canned food so uh, whenever you open it outside of Sweden, uh, people have to evacuate. It's like the Dorian fruit in, uh, in, in Southeast Asia. But anyway, uh, but you see, um, it meant that uh, animal protein could be a preserve for a very long period. And that's why it was valued very much. Uh, all kinds of fish and shellfish. And also uh, the rice, after two years of fermenting in vinegar, uh, it was usually turned into uh, paste. And you did not eat that part. And this kind of sushi survives to this date. And when you go to uh, Shigaken, where, where you have this gigantic Biwako Lake, uh, you can still try them. Uh, like it's a once in a lifetime event, probably. Uh, no, no, it is. It was quite delicious when I tried it. And then after that, uh, so about eight, nine hundred years later, uh, there were more people uh, who could not wait for two years to have their sushi. So uh, they started to will keep put fish on vinegared cooked uh, boiled steamed and vinegared rice for like a week and but in this case they put a lot of pressure on on the on the on the container so that extra water would leave and therefore it could be preserved uh, well so that it could survive and uh, just ferment for a week without rotting and uh, this you can see as uh yes trout sushi uh, in various locations uh, towards the north of Japan. But these were still uh, as large as a whole of a cake. You know, still inconvenient. And then uh, in Edo, you know, for some reason, uh, people were competitive. And uh, this is a complete mystery for a pre-industrial society. But people became incre increasingly hasty. So they did not want to uh, buy one whole of pressed sushi, uh, like the ones they have in Osaka these days, and bring it home and then open it, uh, slice it and eat it. But they wanted something that they could eat on the run. And what was the solution? Uh, it was to chop up the sushi and wrap them in uh, bamboo leaves, bamboo grass leaves, 
Sazanoha. And uh, this kind of leaf uh, has its cleansing effect as well. So that was smart. And also, this is this has become very close to the uh, sushi that is familiar to us today, which is that uh, it has it is it has become basically finger food. You can buy this by small portions. Uh, and interestingly, uh, in contrast to the uh, tempura, uh, sushi started as proper sushi joints started as proper restaurants. You see, it had a very long history. But in those restaurants, uh, they kept competing. So the sushi kept evolving. And also, uh, as the standard of living in Edo City uh, kept rising, so competitors started to enjoy this too. And therefore, it became smaller and uh, more convenient and, and easier to eat. Uh, so that is part one of sushi. Uh, and thank you, Oksana. And uh, so see you, see you next week, everyone. Bye. Uh, thank you very much, Takahasa. Very interesting. <laughs> very interesting story of sushi. And so, JJ, could you please join our conversation today? All right. Thank you, Oksana. Hello, everybody. Uh, we came just returned from Dubai. Uh, we attended the Dubai uh, conference event. The name is Meta Week. And then uh, I'm not sure we have we had more than 1,000 guest people coming to this conference. And then we, our team have been standing by the booth and gave a lot of brochures and gave some, uh, you know, souvenir, the shuriken, shuriken toy. And we were wearing the, you know, uh, Japanese, uh, Japanese fashion style kimono. And then it was, I think, uh, the most creative booth, definitely. And many people came to our booth and took a picture with us and then saying like, oh, this katana is real one. And then, no, 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 if it's real one, we are going to be. You know, harvested the kids and something like that. But yeah, anyway, it was really fun, fun, fun booth and then nice event. Uh, our Dominic gave some, you know, short, uh, short keynotes about uh, NFT mutation. It was so nice, so exciting. And many of the famous people came to our booth and said, like, you know, we would like to uh, make a, you know, part of collaboration, blah, 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 something like that. And then after the team left Dubai, I was uh, staying there for uh, another two days and then went to some, uh, you know, famous office and King's family's office uh, to try to, you know, get a relationship with them. And then, yeah, they definitely are interested in our ecosystem and they definitely uh, want us to come to Dubai again. Uh, because Dubai has many types of conference, maybe more than three or four in October. And then some of the conferences, you know, quite limited one. So well, we, we got some invitation from the King's family in saying like, you know, uh, Edvars is so exciting. I'd like you, I'd like to introduce your project to a royal family or something like that. Yeah, it was so exciting. And then I, I met some, you know, Japanese uh, famous influencer. It, it just for my you know, personal fun and it was so exciting. Uh, so the thing is, I felt a lot of energy, especially in crypto space in Dubai. And then many of the power player in crypto space coming to Dubai and try to, you know, create a new project and new collaboration. And then the thing is, we are confident that Japanese traditional style is super popular among, you know, Western people, Middle East people. And then Dubai is really nice hub for, you know, especially like, like uh, American people, European people, you know, uh, English people, because I think that, that that's supposed to be like, a, you know, kind of uh, single western yeah it, it was it was so amazing and then so nice place to you know expand the system and then uh, uh definitely i can say uh we can uh, create a new connection with you know huge and powerful powerful game players and then dubai king's family as well and then vip in dubai and also other, another project you know attending the conference event also nice partner uh for us so we met uh, a lot of, you know, uh, major exchange people, market making people, and then fintech people. Uh, I'm confident that those connections is going to be super powerful for our future ecosystem. And then, yeah, we are about to launch marketplace as well. And then we uh, safely passed that down March already. And then the price of Ethereum is getting down, but still, uh, yeah, um, it, it, it's going to be exciting news coming quite soon. So uh, please take a look at our project and then, yeah, I uh, look forward to, you know, announcing the new news to all of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, JJ. I'm very glad that you are safely 
arrived to your home and to Japan and Thank had you. fun <laughs> in Dubai and experienced all this community. Yeah. Uh, I wish next time I will be with you, maybe. <laughs> and, uh, why not? Why not? Why not? Yeah, of course. You're, you're going to be in kimono as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <nice>. Thank <laughs> you. With katana. <laughs> yeah, with katana and shuriken. Shuriken, shuriken yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, let's throw it as a guest. <laughs> Shurikens. <laughs> Great, thank you. Yeah, you're going to be yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And uh, we have a small meeting today, and please, uh, like Dominique, could you please sum up everything? Okay. Um, yeah, um, I heard um, um, the Edwards Foundation is preparing for the token listing for Zenis very soon, and uh, we are looking forward. Um, I don't. Um, I just haven't heard just uh, just exactly that the when it's happening, but yeah, according to them, actually, you know, it's going to be very very soon. Yeah, and then uh, we once that is listed in the stock exchange, it must be uh, overseas. For, yeah, just you know, if you think of Japan, that um, um, I don't know which 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 market actually uh, they're gonna they're gonna just do it. But uh, once that it happens, it's uh, we see that some some market cap of Zenis, and then probably the, the faster ecosystem market cap will be appeared. Um, it's going to be, uh, we can just measure the size at the, the beginning uh, of the uh, Edelbars and the, uh, of the market, the market size. And then, um, uh, and also that we can just, uh, we can uh, just grow, uh, the Edelbars can grow uh, from from now at, the, uh, at this in the market level in the cryptocurrency uh, market. Um, at the moment, in the, after the march of the Ethereum, um, the market becomes uh, a little weak, and then the people just think that uh, that still that the, the crypto market is just uh, stagnant. Um, uh, we have to see probably I think another one and a half years, so we have a lot of time to develop. So now that we can focus on the developments, just we are talking to every day, we can talk into. Uh, 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 3D developers, just like uh, Sequins, and also game makers and game developers, and also a token and tokenomics. The tokenomics is going to be very, uh, very exciting for me because it's going to be it's very advanced because we're just making some of the DeFi, very advanced DeFi project, and also the uh, advanced NFT five project too. So um, uh, we we need a we need a time, but at least uh, then you know, we will see that uh, uh, real game in the end of two thousand twenty three. But in the Edwards will be uh, just evolved very dramatically in the future that for a really long time, and and then um, after the this uh, news from the foundation that um, um, we. And uh, don't finish the uh, harvesting the zenies, and also uh, we don't finish the harvesting the cotton NFT for the single rights holding shareholders uh, yet. And we uh, we will just uh, we will just make uh, time to uh, explain uh, the how to just. Uh, complete it because in the many people still that it, uh, yeah, cannot just make it yet so uh, i hope just uh, people can just make it but of of, of course that's we're going to just make some of the session uh how to just um how to work a, a metamask and also how to harvest uh the cryptos and then um uh we will launch a alpha version of a market platform and uh, of course at the moment that we can uh, trade our uh, nft land nfts through uh, open sea but uh, in the future and very soon after this march we just wait in the march because uh, we don't know what that, what hap what will happens but it it didn't happen anything so uh, we will launch the market platform and then you can just trade um uh, the, the land nft or uh, maybe katana in the future just through the uh, through the market the, the market platform and then um we are, of course, considering the second uh, uh, the land sale, but the original schedule was uh, October. But you know, it might be a little sort of uh, the the timing must be a little extended uh, to uh, to the to the end of the year because the, we need more sort of platform uh, developments. I think uh, we, we, we a priority just should be I think those kind of development first, and then. Um, um, 
uh, we are waiting for the 10% accumulate game winner. And still, that actually, we didn't have a, a, a market platform yet. So uh, people are still just uh, now considering that, that which hand should be, uh, which hand, hand is better, and then which hand should, uh, should take that more than 10%. So, uh, Probably uh, uh, we will see the winner the towards the end of this month, and I I hope that the, the that winner uh, will enjoy the sales with the cartoon in the future, and the business. And also, as, as JJ mentioned, that uh, the Metro Week was quite successful, and many people uh, came to a booth, and then a booth was really spot of a photo photo spots in the fair, and everybody coming there and the, uh, taking the photos. That uh, now the many people in the Middle East just know the Edubas already. So um, um, our ecosystem is now is, a, is a gradually expanding to the overseas uh, from J- from Japan first, and then and now Dubai and the Middle East, and then the, the Middle East and Dubai is connecting the Ukraine and also Russia, and also we have already the, the strong contact with in uh, in Hong Kong and also Malaysia, and 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 many uh, our, our global strategy just uh, is now uh, uh, we are now expanding. So. Uh, I hope um, um, uh, our global uh, network uh, will be uh, expanded to the Europe very, very in the future. So, um, and now uh, everybody in the team is very busy, and and then uh, I think it's still it, even just everybody busy that, and, and it takes time. So please be patient, and then um, and please uh, just stay tuned, and 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 then we hope just we can enjoy the game together in the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you everyone for listening. And uh, I will uh, be with you next week. Goodbye.